Hi, this is Ram with Bedroom Tattooing. Been a while, I'm putting up another one here. And uh, we've been doing a lot of talking recently with some of the side projects we have going on. So I figured I would just make a video about um, autonomy. But as a client, what's up with your autonomy when you walk into a tattoo shop? We'll talk about that now. All right. <laughs> Okay, now that that's over. I have to say it feels a little weird doing videos again, but it's nice at the same time. So let's see if I can, if I can pull this off the dome. We don't take notes, I just, I just talk. Uh, and let's, let's see if we can get down to the core of why I believe, which I know there's gonna be a lot of haters out there, which is fine. I got really Canadian there for a second. Uh, why a client should not retain autonomy when they're going in to get a tattoo, right? Um, you'll notice the first thing that usually happens as a client when you walk into a shop, the majority of shops that I've seen um, across this, this fine continent, is that things get loud, right? And when you walk in, there, there can be music playing. Sometimes it's really loud, sometimes it's you know, whatever. But automatically, you kind of lose your voice, right? A lot of shops are kind of dark, gold, red, gray, black tones, checkerboard floors or whatever. And it's kind of a foreign space, especially when you think about how bright and light we're always trying to make everything, especially in the Western world now. So when you walk in, especially on your first tattoo, and you're greeted with this cacophonous environment, uh, it, it can kind of make you take a step back. You can feel out of place if that's not what your normal, you know, living and existing space is like. So you're walking through this, you feel a little bit off, and then you talk to a tattooer and they're just like, what? It's difficult because if you have been thinking about this tattoo design for a period of time and you are concerned about many things, especially in, including the pain of what may happen, and you're greeted with something that, it's almost like you have to pull blood from a stone <laughs> when you walk in and you start dealing with some people, I, I don't think that that's right. Now, everyone's entitled to do what they want uh, and run their business however they want, free market and all that stuff. But I think when you're a client and you walk into a space like that, if you don't feel comfortable instantly, you should leave. Um, and that's, that's just reserving some right to autonomy. Now your friends or people around you may say, this is just how it is, chill out. But if you don't feel comfortable doing stuff, you should not go and do it, right? You wouldn't have a plumber come over to your house and be like, yo, what's up? I'm gonna, you know, install this toilet, you don't get a thing, it's my style, you wouldn't let them do that. You wouldn't let a hairdresser just come in and kind of blare whatever type of music, not talk to you and say that they've got this without taking your input into things, right? So you need to reserve that ability to just stop, pause and walk away when you're a client if you don't feel like they're gonna give you the things that you want. Um, so that's our initial foray into this. Now there's a lot of things that happen beforehand that I have some issues with uh, a few tattooers that I've met doing um, that we're trying to figure out a way to collaborate and work through. But um, the first one is gonna be like no proper consultation process. Now if, if you're a client and you're walking in to get uh, a tattoo, let me just start marking this down. I got a whiteboard behind me, right? We'll talk about the consult. Uh, consultation. Um, you want to have a consultation, doing so over a direct messaging or instant messaging system is difficult, right? Because a lot of our language is not actually just done in words, it's done through gestures. I talk a lot with my hands, especially when I'm recording. And so if you're trying to make something like really big and very important and you, you write something out, that the, the body language that's attached to it is not going to work very well. So if you can't get in in person, why don't you try to suggest as a client setting up like a video call that you can talk to the person um, and get to know them before committing to anything, right? There's, there's always gonna be a break where like you can be a fan of somebody and you just love their artwork and you can separate yourself enough from that to be able to sit through basically anything to get what you want, but I don't know if you should. There's, there's so many amazing people on the planet that idolizing a single person and thinking that they're unique in some special way it shouldn't allow them to be it rude or you know uh, not accommodating or whatever else because you're paying them money as a client. You are paying them money to do a job, something that you don't know how to do. It's like going to a mechanic. You can go see the best, biggest rock star mechanic in the world, but if that person treats you like garbage, do you want them to fix your car? Probably not, even if they're the best, right? So get to know the person beforehand, have a proper consultation, and you also want to be able to ask questions, right? So if we have, 
especially it's your first tattoo, your second tattoo, whatever, if you have a lot of questions that you need answered and you're just trying to understand more about what you're doing to your body, those should be met with as much information as is available globally so that you can better understand what you're doing to your body. Now this is probably going a bit overboard because of my background, but I want everyone to understand why I'm doing what they're doing. And it has to be based on who they are as a person, as opposed to some rote application across the board, right? Because aftercare is gonna be different depending on who you are, what your age is, where you live, what you do for a job, everything, right? So just thinking that everything is inside of tattooing is it's art and there's no extra variables that you have to consider is not correct. Right, so when you come into a consultation, you ask questions, maybe the people don't have answers, you need to check and see if they're willing to find them for you. And if they're not, do you trust that process and giving up that level of autonomy enough to let them do whatever they think is best without your input? And if you don't, leave. If you're like, it's fine, have at it. I think that's amazing, right? Because um, you can still get like really good artwork from amazing people who maybe don't know exactly why they're doing what they're doing, but they know how to do it, right? It's like um, building a house. If you go take a college course on how to build construction, engineering, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you can build a really solid, amazing, great house, and you can say why it's going to work that way. Meanwhile, you could have somebody who's just out there and knows how to build houses build the exact same thing. They just may not understand exactly how. They'll just say, this works. And it's fine. You can trust them on that. But if you're looking for more, <laughs> just shop around, right? You can always get consultations from multiple people to get the information you need without having to commit to an actual tattoo. So think about that when you're getting into it. Um, the next one is going to be the actual like design process. Now... As an industry, we need to start giving people their designs well before their actual appointment. Now, if you're doing a walk-in, totally different. If you're doing a Friday the 13th, you're gonna get what you're gonna get. Um, but if you're making a custom piece, you should be able to see the design at least a week beforehand. And this is something that we do with our shop is when people come in and we have a large scale custom design, we have a dry fit before we actually commit to the design placement and the final tattoo. So we'll have people come into the shop, we'll take the stencil and we'll lay it on their body and we'll send them home just to see what it feels like. Now, some people will say no, cause you're gonna go somewhere else and get that tattoo. And I could see that possibly happening. But if you've developed as a tattooer, a relationship with that person through talking, having good consultation and answering all their questions, more than likely you're gonna be building that connection. And it's weird to just randomly have somebody mark you for the rest of your life. So in my experience, 99% of all the people I've tattooed in 21 years have always come back to get their design and have never taken it somewhere else to get it done by another person because we've established a connection and that tattoo based relationship where we understand, agree to work together and we're kind of coming towards a common goal, right? So, if you haven't seen your design as a client, oftentimes you'll walk into the shop and it's the day of the appointment. You get to see it on the spot and you as a client are forced right then to make a decision about if you don't want to have that design and lose your deposit and leave or just accept the fact that you've been waiting possibly months or years and you have to get what they want to do. And that's, it's kind of a weird thing. Like you wouldn't go to a dentist and you've been waiting to get into the dentist and the dentist comes out and says, we're putting braces on you. And you're like, but I don't want braces, I want a filling. You wouldn't do it, you would leave, right? Even if you lost the deposit. Like tattoos are permanent cosmetic modifications to your body. So you wanna make sure that you're approaching it that way. And if you can't see and prepare yourself for what's gonna be going on to your body, I, I would urge you just to take pause, see if you can reschedule and, uh, just see the design before it comes up. And it's, it's difficult, like speaking from a tattooer side, because I'm working with hundreds of people. So that means hundreds of text messages, emails, phone calls, Zoom calls, artwork examples that have to be done, redrafted, 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 applied, test fitted, and then actually set up for the tattoo. And it, it takes an immense amount of effort to even do one tattoo. So sometimes if you do get somebody who's willing to push it off and say, okay, well, I don't have the artwork quite done yet, but I'll have it done by this time. If they have full books, it may take longer to get the tattoo, but you can be sure that you're gonna end up getting what you want. Um, if I was a client and I didn't really trust the whole process, try breaking it up into steps, right? Instead of putting down a deposit on the tattoo, just pay for the artwork to begin with. 
If the artwork is paid for and you get the artwork back and it needs amendments, even if you have to continually pay for each draft, you know that you're not committing down to the tattoo and you're gonna to have to walk in there and lose a larger chunk of money, right? So these are some of the bigger things that we need to think about before. During the tattoo is always just let the artist know what you wanna do. Like, I like to talk during a tattoo, cool, you know? I don't like to talk, cool. Most, like, tattooers, I can't multitask, sorry. Um, most tattooers are good at just like, oops, during tattooers. Um, this is why I can't multitask. Um, most tattooers during the actual process are pretty good at doing whatever you need to do, right? Some people don't like to talk, um, especially some of the newer tattooers I've seen, they get the headphones on and they, they just cramp out and that's cool. Um, but if you need something different, try to just engage them, right? And if you've gone through all of this stuff already, it should be easier to find a common ground. Um, so after the tattoo, this is gonna be the last spot where I get a, the most kickback from tattooers in general, right? Because the aftercare that you're going to receive at most shops is not tailored fit to you as a person. There's a blanket statement about how to heal a tattoo, considering it's a wound, but there isn't any truth in the fact that there's only one way to heal it, because everyone's skin is different. You know, somebody who's 80 years old should take care of their tattoo differently than somebody who's 19. Somebody who has dark skin would take care of it differently than somebody who has extremely light skin. So if you are handed something that is rote, take it with a grain of salt, talk to a doctor, or even just stick with what your normal skincare routine is and keep that level of autonomy that you know how to take care of your body as well as you do because you live in it every day. So. We got some other videos about this. I'll probably put some cards or something up um, for you to check them out. But past that, this is this is our talk for today. So I hope that it's helped. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know what you think, and uh, yeah, that's it for today. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing signing off.